Well, it's not quite Friday afternoon, but it is time for another episode of Friday Afternoon Physics. Today we're going to talk about the mysteries of waves. So we have an apparatus here which consists of a, a very shallow tank of water. And we're going to shine light up through the tank of water so that we can see very clearly all the ripples that travel through the water. And we're going to generate ripples using a mechanical vibrator and this mechanical vibrator has two different heads that will shake up and down in unison. Now, when I, um, uh, when I uh, turn on the machine, we can see, once it gets going here, ripple. It's a little noisy. Each of the two oscillating ends, seen in silhouette on the right, acts as a source of ripples. These spread out in overlapping circular patterns. In some directions, the waves add together and make a stronger wave. An object floating on the water's surface in one of these places would bob up and down a lot as the wave passed. This is called constructive interference. But in other directions, something different happens. The waves in these places actually cancel out almost to zero. You can see this in the shadows by squinting a little and looking for the places that stay the same, neither brighter nor darker as the waves move. Here, a floating object would go up and down very little. This is called destructive interference. Now we're going to do the same demonstration of constructive and destructive wave interference, but we're going to use light waves instead of ripples in a tank. So here we have a light source, a laser beam, Instead of having two light sources, we're going to shine the laser through a screen that has two slits. The so light will emerge through the two slits. They'll act as the two sources of waves. Um, this, uh, this screen actually has four pairs of slits, but we're only going to shine the light on one of them. So from the two slits, the light shines onto this, this distant screen, and we'll be able to see the, uh, the pattern of constructive and destructive interference of the light waves. Let's take a close look at the slits in the, uh, in, the, um, in the barrier. So here's the set of slits. We'll put it down here on a card and let's, let's zoom in and take a, take a close look so you can see uh, these slits and see how big they are and how far apart they are. We're going to use the slits on the left side of the screen, only a quarter of a millimeter apart. So now let's adjust the slits so that the light is shining through the two slits. Here we go. Now over here, we have a pattern on the screen. Take a look. Here you have the interference pattern for laser light shining through the two slits. It's a broad band composed of a series of light and dark spots. The light spots represent places where the two waves add together constructively. The dark spots represent places where the two waves from the two slits cancel each other out. Destructive interference. Now, while we're looking at the pattern, I'm going to take the edge of this index card, very carefully cover up one of the slits, and we'll see how the pattern changes between the light shining through two slits and through one slit. Watch carefully. Let's see. This is covering up both slits. That's what you get from one slit. Two slits, one slit. Two slits, one slit. Notice there are places on the screen which are dark when both slits are open, but are somewhat brighter when only one slit is open. In other words, we can add two sources of light together and make the light dimmer some places. This is a characteristic of waves. But the fact that light travels through space in the form of waves 
exhibiting constructive and destructive interference, like the ripples in the tank, isn't the whole story. It turns out that light also interacts with matter in the form of particles, photons. These are extremely tiny amounts of light energy. But when light strikes matter, it delivers its energy to the matter in the form of discrete lumps, discrete quanta, photons, particles of light. This is the central mystery of quantum mechanics. How does this work in the two-slit experiment? Individual photons pass through the slits. They strike the screen at random, like raindrops falling on a sidewalk. The intensity of the light wave determines the probability that a photon falls here or there on the screen. In other words, we need to use both particle and wave ideas to describe what happens. The energy of light comes in discrete units, that is, as photons. Each photon behaves randomly. But wave effects like constructive and destructive interference affect the odds of where the photon winds up. Billions of photons together form the smooth pattern of interference spots. But the effects happen even if only one photon at a time passes through the apparatus. Here's an apparatus where we're going to be able to do the interference experiment with extremely dim light. It's made by a company called TeachSpin, and it's a thing of beauty. Let's take a look. At this end, we have a light source. Right now, we're using a, uh, a, a, a small red laser, but there's an, an even dimmer light source here. The light source shines on a single slit, which causes the light to spread out. Here, the light strikes a second barrier with a pair of slits. And also, there's a, there's a, a, a little uh, aperture at the front, so I'll be able to cover up one slit at a time. And then finally, the light shines to a very sensitive light detector. Okay, let's watch it work. What we've done is we've covered up our apparatus so that no stray light reaches it. And we have a light source. We've replaced our laser with a light source that is so dim that only a few thousand photons per second travel from one end to the other. A few thousand per second sounds like a lot, but in fact, it only takes light about three or four billionths of a second to go from one end to the other. So that means that at any given moment, there's at most one photon in the apparatus. We're doing the experiment one photon at a time. At the other end of the apparatus, we have an extremely sensitive light detector, so sensitive that it can register a single photon striking it. The sensitivity of that detector is why we've had to cover up the apparatus so carefully. I can take the output of my detector and play it in a speaker. Those clicks you are hearing are signals produced by the impact of a single quantum particle of light on our detector. This is essentially a Geiger counter for light. The individual photons hit randomly. It's the number of photons that determines whether the light is bright or dim. Now this is a place where the light is very dim. The light here is dim because there's destructive interference. But how does destructive interference work if there's only one photon at a time in the experiment? Well, to prove to you that this is destructive interference, I'm going to cover one of the slits, which I can do with this knob here. By turning this knob, about a quarter of a millimeter, I can cover up one of the two slits. Here we go. I've covered the slit, but now there are more photons striking than there were before. Instead of about 9 or 10 photons, I have 20 or 30 photons every second. More clicks. Somehow, by blocking one of the paths that the photon can travel, I've increased the probability that the photon will land at the detector. I can understand this if the light travels in the form of waves, but it seems incomprehensible to understand this if we think of light composed of photons.